Hey Valley Metal, welcome back to what could be and should be your last math video of the year. Tonight we're going to work on surface area. It's in chapter 12 and there's really only one lesson in chapter 12 and that's this. Before we get started with our last lesson, let's do our trivia question. I want to end with baseball because it's my love. How many baseballs are used in an MLB game? See if you can figure out the answer to that or give it a good estimate, and I will give you some cool trivia about that later, too. Tonight's official target is 12.4a. I can find the surface area of a rectangular prism. Surface area confuses a lot of kids, but really it's as easy as 1, 2, 3. Uh, let's take a look at this box here. This is Mrs. Crothers' birthday gift uh, for me, and she wants to know how many square inches of wrapping paper will it take her to wrap this? Well. Once again, it's as easy as one, two, three. On any box or prism, the way they draw it, you're going to be able to see three sides. So you just number the sides and do them. Here's side one. Let's call this side two, and it really doesn't matter what the order is. And let's just call this one side three. So the dimensions for side one, and I've made these so you can pull them out, oops, made them so you can move them, is 10 by 12. So it's 10 down here in the bottom, and it's 12 high. So I can slide over so you can see it's 10 times 12. So 10 times 12 is 120. So that's going to be the answer for side 1. And you notice how I put two of them in? Because there's also a back side to every prism too. So there's one back here that's 10 times 12, the area, and one here that's 10 times 12, which is the surface area. Side 2 is going to be 10 times 15. I did that in a different color. So here I've got 15. Oops, I did the wrong one. I'm going to switch these numbers for you quick. Side 2 is 10 times 15. So down here, it's, you can see that it's 10 wide. I got it down there by the 10. And it's 15 long. So 10 by 15. This area here, 10 by 15, is 150. 10 times 15 is 150. And you certainly can use a calculator. And I've got mine heading over here to use in a little bit. So that's side two. And then side three is going to be 15 times 12. 15 times 12. If you pop that into a calculator, you're going to get 180. And once again, for both sides two and three, I put that number in twice because there's a front side. And if I slide this all the way to the back, you can see where there would be a back side as well. Now you have a total of six numbers. Add those up. Those are the six faces of the prisms. Those are the that's the surface area of each side, and you'd get a number sentence that looks something like this. 360, which would be these two guys, plus 240, which would be these two guys, plus 300, which would be these two guys. You could do them in order. I kind of grouped them by what I knew. I knew that 18 and 18 was 360. So basically what you get is a total of 900 if you were to add those up on the calculator. And that's your surface area. Make sure you use the proper label. 900 square inches. Let's look at an even simpler problem. Here's the old Rubik's Cube. Now we want to know what the surface area, the total area of the exterior surface, that's what it is. You could think of each of these little colored squares that you could peel off as a square unit, right? A square inch, a square centimeter, whatever the label is. But we'll call them square units for this one. So you can clearly see that there are nine square units on this side, correct? Because it's three groups of three. So let's just call that side one. Three groups of three. Well, there's three groups of three, which is nine units on this side. There's also nine units on the back side. So I can put in a nine for that side one and a nine for the opposite side one on the back. Side 2, of course, is also going to be 3 by 3. But don't forget, I have to take and put a 9 in for the front, the side that we can see, and also a 9 for the side that we can't see. Of course, now we've got the top and the bottom left. I got 3, on, three by 3 on the top, which is 9, and I've got 3 by 3 on the bottom, which is 9. So I'll put in two more 9s. So we have a total then of... One, two, three, four, five, six. You should always have six numbers when you're adding up that surface area. If you haven't, you've made a mistake. And remember, you're only doing three problems, but you're doubling them. So I've got nine times six, which is 54. And I'll just pop that down in there. 
54 units squared. Okay? First step, write out one, two, three. Next step, find the dimensions of each of the sides. And you can write them over on the side if you want. A lot of times I just do it in my head. Next step, do the three problems, but make sure you put the answer in twice because you're going to add it up for both the side that you're calculating and the side that's the exact same size that you can't see. All right, let's try it one more time, then I'll have you do one. All right, on this rectangle here, we need to find the surface area. All right, let's see. I just picked this guy here as side one. Let's see how that would go here. And you can also see how it would go back there. That'll be the back side. So let's put a one in here. And let's find the measurements. Well, it's going to be 15 times 12, or 12 times 15. Well, you probably remember that that's 180. But in case you didn't know, maybe I made a mistake too. I'll pop it in. 12 times 8. Just do it it's very simply. I must not have cleared my calculator. 12 times 18 is, you got to be kidding me, 12 times 15. Sorry, I read that wrong. 12 times 15 is 180. My bad. All right, so I put in my 180. All right, next side. Uh, I'll pick this side over here. Call this a two. The sides are going to be 15 times 20. So I've got, let me just double check, make sure I've got that right. 15 on this side and 20 over here. So I'm actually going to put that side in. 15 times 20. 15 times 20, that's easy. 15 times 2 is 30. So 15 times 20 is 300. So I'm going to pop two of those in because you've got this side and the back side. And we've only got one side left. We can see the top. So that's over here. I could take and slide that guy in. I'll put this guy in the back. And you'll be able to see how you can see the six faces on this one. I kind of built it that way. All right. So side three then is going to be 12 wide. You can see the 12 down there by 20. 12 by 20. Well, 12 by 20 is 240, so I can pop those numbers in. Now all I have to do is add them up. Let's grab the calculator. Make sure I clear this. 180 plus 180. That should be 360. Um, 300 and 300, that's 600, so I'm just going to put it in there. Plus 600. Should give me 960. Now I got 240 and 240. Well, that's really 480. 480. That gives me a total of 1080. That didn't work. Let me try that one more time. 180 plus 180. Oh, that's what I did. I typed it in wrong. I'm going to do it shorter. 180 plus 180 is 360. Plus. I got 300 and 300, that's 600. Plus, I got 240 and 240 is 480 equals 1440. Grab that. So you have a total of 1440 meters squared because make sure you use the proper label. All right, this one's all yours, go. All right. Finding the surface area. Well, remember that you can change the sides around. So uh, I'll do the side first here. Um, I'll do the this blue side here, which is going to be 3 by 5. So 3 times 5 is 15. So I've got two 15s. I've got one for the front, and of course I've got this one here in the back. And then I've got, um, let's do the top here, because that'll be 3 times 4. Just grab that guy. So that's 3 times 4, that's right. 3 times 4 is 12, so I'll pop that dude in. And then this last side here, that'll be like the front. That's like 4 times 5, so that would be 20, and I'll pop that in for my third measurement. If I add those dudes all up, I got 30. 20 and 20 is 40, which would give me 70. And 12 and 12 is 24. That would be a total of 94, and that's going to be centimeters squared. All right.
instead of trying a couple more, let me just have you try the ticket to the show. Go ahead. Find the surface area of this prism. Remember, one, two, three. Double, double the area of each side because you've actually got two. Add them up. Make sure you got a label correctly. All right, the ticket to the show. Sorry, that's the wrap. How many baseballs are used in a major league game? Well, about a 10 dozen, roughly. Uh, 100 balls, 8 to 10 dozen. Some of the games don't use quite as many. So you can figure about 100 balls. But did you also know that each ball is rub rubbed down with a secret mud that since the 1950s, all mud in every major league clubhouse comes from the same secret spot in South Jersey? Uh, and it's from this place called Lena Blackburn Baseball Rubbing Mud. It's been in this guy's uh, family for three generations. And what they do is it's a secret location. They go out and they skim like the top inch of this silt or mud off the bottom of the river someplace. And they take and put it in these little uh, jars and they sell it to these uh, sell it to MLB and minor league teams. So if you catch a foul ball and it looks like it's dirty but it was only in for one pitch, it's not the dirt from the field probably, but this rub, this mud they rub on there. Why do they rub down uh, 100 balls or 8 to 10 dozen balls for each game? It's to take the shine or the sheen off the ball. So it's a little easier for the players to see it as it comes in and feel it and when it's in the sky and in the air and they're about to catch it. All right, hope you learned something about baseballs and... How to find surface area. It's as easy as one, two, three. Thanks.